in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed when Satan saw unusual angels around Jesus while he was praying and fasting, Satan came and waited at the wilderness patiently. The Bible says that angels came and ministered to him. An unusual desire to pray, an unusual desire to give, an unusual attack, and then number four. Can I tell you what the fourth key is? When a season is about to change, you will not have the passion to be around people again. There will be an unusual drawing. God will now begin to draw you to intense seasons of consecration. You will find out that sometimes, even around your husband or your wife, you don't even want to be around anybody because there are things only, it is, it is between you and God. He wants to open up to you a new blueprint. I'm saying this because with these indicators, someone is now seeing that I am actually ending a season in my life. And starting another one so this desire to pray I am always prayerful but what is this desire to pray and then this unusual desire to give and then this demonic attack it looks like everybody around me is now fighting me don't fight them back you are wasting your time these are these are demonic orchestrations to distract your focus have you noticed that there are times when you spend time in the presence of God as you come out everything is offending you everybody is offending you it's a strategy to distract you remember we wrestle not against flesh and blood mm -mm. is someone learning you must learn to discern times the Bible says he made the lights the stars to signify times and seasons that means there are lights that signify times I wish I had the time I would have told you stories upon stories in my own life when I knew that certain seasons were coming to an end woe betides a man who cannot discern and a new season just comes to pass you and you do not even know like Jacob mm -mm. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. One of the keys to training your discernment is to commit to the ministry of prayer and the word. Listen, believers, don't waste tonight. I know we will praise. I know we will sing. But it is important for you to know. The Bible says there is, as it were, many voices. And none of them is without signification. Do you know for someone one of the music ministers will come up here and they will raise a song that everybody will be dancing with but to you it is a sign that song will be that this is the sign by this sign is telling you that a new season is opening up most believers in church are not discerning we just come and jump around and go back and season and the realm of the spirit is trying to notify you Woman of God, the mantle is about to start speaking. Do you not know that grace to pray? Shut down on everything and go back for two or three days of fasting and prayer. Lord, what are you saying? Then the blueprint for the ministry comes. What are you saying? 
Proverbs 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. One instruction will come. I have anointed you this day. Sing my praises to the nations. Uh, that's it. You can come out and say, oh, so this is it. That means the grace is upon my life. Man of God, don't assume it is time for you to start ministry. Don't assume it is time for you to start preaching. Can I tell you, when God wants to lift you next week, Satan will bring you a proposal now. Not every open door is of God. Even the prison has a door. So when a door is open, verify where you are entering. You can, a door can be open and you will enter thinking it's breakthrough. Only to find out you shot yourself in a prison. Can I tell you? The unbecoming of believers in these end times will be assumption and presumption. Never assume there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Lord, should I pursue? Especially when great doors begin to open, don't be in a hurry. My father, you are the one who lifts me. Speak to me. If I do not hear your voice, I'm not taking a step. Some trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the name of our God. I have potentials to open five and ten branches, you may be saying, in worry as a pastor. But Lord, is it your will? Don't say everybody is doing it. No. Listen, I am praying that by this meeting tonight, that God will plant upon someone the grace. There is something called inquiry prayer. Inquiry prayer is not give me tea, give me bread. We are talking about prayers that connect to Kairos moments. Should I pursue? And if his voice does not come, you stay there. Shamakato sabiata sometimes listen let me challenge you especially i know that there are lots of worship ministers here let me speak to you by the spirit every time you are alone with god listen very carefully because in his voice will come melodies that one song that comes from the secret place one song can announce you and give you global visibility beyond your imagination there are songs that do not die because they did not come from the earth realm there are songs that as soon as you are hearing it, as the person is going back to his seat, the song is dying as you are clapping. Because it was just human manipulation, but there are songs that are deep in the spirit. Man of God, could tonight be the moment where God wants you to encounter grace? You want to arise? It will not happen because you have stayed long. <clears throat> You have been wasting your chronos. For some of you, you are one week left to step into your Kairos moment. Imagine a student who has not been reading and now has one week to write the final exams. It's going to take the grace of God. That's why the Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy. 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 The Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Tonight you will hear the trumpet. You will hear the saxophone. You will hear singing. You will hear worship. I pray that it will not just be a special number. Or celebrities ministering. That in the midst of the sounds. You will hear your own sound. Hmm. The sound that is connected to the anointing upon your life. The sound that will open you up to new dimensions. The sound that will birth something within your spirit businessman did you know that you can stay with God and you just hear one one instruction from God and you go and do exactly what he's asked you to do and you will create transgenerational wealth that will outlive you to the third and the fourth generation hallelujah yes Apostle, my own is anointing. When will it come? God will never call you without empowering you. But the key is to continue to learn and build. Because the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel. 
if the vessel is small it will make the oil look small so while you are waiting for the oil go and borrow vessels don't borrow oil but borrow vessels enlarge your capacity it says borrow not a few man of god you want to be a prophet to the nations with the trial and error that you have now god cannot trust destinies to your hands like that can you speak the purposes of god to nations with audacity and power go and stay with him let him walk upon you let him purge you let him build you let him anoint you listen there is no power in existence not when you understand the interplay of chronos and kairos we're going to find a place to pray hallelujah I thank God today for certain seasons I was able to maximize in my life. Seasons that came by instruction. Certain seasons, certain fastings, certain prayers, certain books, certain men. Things that may not make sense. Some of you, God can give you an instruction in the night. I'm talking of discernment. Just walk around your living room praying in the spirit. I will come to you. It may not make sense. You just obey. That's why the Bible says that the kingdom is for people who are childlike. Shabakakosiata. And you are going around. One hour, two hours. Lord, what are you saying? I'm just walking around my parlor. And then the spirit of God comes to you. And he says, now get a Bible and a paper. Start writing. Man of God every time you stand before the people kneel before me and i will honor that meeting that becomes your strategy somebody would do it and it will not work because it was not a covenant so you see certain people do certain things and you see it work wonders and you try to copy because it did not come by revelation and absolutely nothing works for you i dread taking any step that was not sponsored by the voice of God. I have seen the value of discernment. For some of you, you have rushed seasons that God has no business in. You need to retrace your step tonight to say, Lord, I want to start afresh. I was angry because all my colleagues were in ministry and I felt I don't want anybody to disrespect me. So I started a small prayer group. And you see how you are suffering as if God is not alive because that you cannot secure a divine backing over something that was carnal and mundane. Discernment. Let me give you the second and we'll pray. Is God speaking to someone tonight? The second thing you need to do is to obtain grace to take prompt action. Prompt action. We maximize seasons when we take prompt action. Listen, when God has not spoken, when you do not understand the direction, you wait. But when his voice comes and he gives you the green light, procrastination may mean the difference between you and the next season. I taught you, John chapter 5, the pool of Bethesda. Can you imagine that man was lying down close to the pool? One year became five years. Five years became ten years. Ten years became fifteen. I'm sure someone will come to visit that pool and say, my friend, you are still here? He says, yes. Remember, I came after you. And now I've left and you are still here. Next year, I will try it. Do you know if Jesus did not help that man, he would have died there. Being around a miracle does not bring a miracle. It means you are closer to a miracle. It is your action of obedience. Action of obedience. When God says give, give immediately. Can I tell you, in this kingdom you strike when the iron is hot. Because when you come back to the realm of the flesh, the instruction God gave that made sense as that when you were with him in the secret place will no longer make sense again. So it is wise to take steps quickly before the devil comes to cheat you. Hallelujah. Action. Many people have missed on their days of visitation because they do not know what action to take. 
Oh, for instance, give Jesus a shout of praise and you've been struggling with something, some growth is there and that was the prophetic instruction. You just felt these musicians like shouting, Jare, I'm tired of all this nonsense, I've been shouting. <coughs> That shout would have been the shout that brings out that tumor forever because it looked to you like an ordinary shout except that there was a covenant that was backing that statement. Whatever he tells you to do, Mary said, do it. And guess the instruction. Fill six pots with water and then fetch without verifying whether it has become wine. You are not allowed to taste it. Start going to the rulers. How many of you can take that kind of risk? The rulers are waiting. And then you are saying, sir, wine is coming. And then you fetch water. And literally, they could jail you and kill you. But that is the power of obedience. The signs don't go before. The signs follow. You must take steps of faith. This sign shall follow. This sign shall follow. It didn't say this sign shall go with. It is the Lord that goes with. The signs follow as proof that you have taken steps of faith. Hallelujah. I remember one time, two testimonies and we pray. I was praying in the spirit, preparing and then the Lord brought me this scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord your God will set thee on high above how many nations? All the nations of the earth. It says and this blessing shall come upon thee and shall overtake thee. These were the words that God brought to me. And from that situation, that lowly estate, would I believe this? I said, Lord, I believe you. It may not make sense, but if this is your prophetic destiny for me, then I believe. And whatever step it will take, and whatever price I will pay, in partnership with your grace, and in partnership with prophetic timings, I obtain that grace. Can I tell you the truth? When God speaks to you, Ba, believe that he's not playing with you. I hope you know if God said it, it does not guarantee that it will happen. It depends on your believing. It depends on your participating through obedience. They heard the word just like we did. It says the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the sons of Issachar, that they had an understanding of the times, then to know what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says their brethren were at their command. One time the Lord spoke to me and said that you will not only raise people who are spiritual, you will raise kings and people of influence. And he gave me the scripture, Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. This was the scripture he gave me. Please give it to us. Genesis 17 verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings will come out of you. You will not draw kings to come, they will come out of you. I believed him I believed him what has he told you have you discerned seasons in your life did you know that your chronos is a gift by God from God to prepare for those kairos moments apostle has been 10 years without a child I know I understand but what are you doing do you not know that every time there was delay in childbirth in the Bible the child that came always became a covenant child and a prophet so while you are waiting are you preparing for Samuel are you preparing to to raise John the Baptist was Samuel an ordinary child was John the prophet an ordinary child so your 10 years delay, rather than just crying in lamentation alone, you go to the word and say, what happened to all the women who had delays? That the children who came were prophetic children. So Lord, whilst I am waiting, I begin to build myself in the similitude of Elizabeth. I build myself in the similitude of Hannah to hand over Samuel back to you. Because Samuel becomes that prophet who will ordain the kings in Israel. Listen, let me speak to someone. Stop crying about the days you anticipate to come. Start preparing for them because they will come. Unfortunately, they will not come in a way that you will see easily. 
Jesus said, you use the weather, paraphrasing, to know that after four months, then come the harvest. That means the harvest never takes you by surprise. I have put times and seasons for you to know. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. When I found this key, I vowed that I will never miss out on prophetic seasons in my life. The key is not to look for them. The key is to prepare while I trust the Lord God of heaven to connect me. So I prepare in prayer. I prepare in fasting. I prepare in building. I prepare in learning that the things that I do not know because the Bible says 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2 it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything it says let him know that he does not know as he ought to know he knows nothing yet as he ought to know so Joshua Selman there are many things you do not yet know and you humble yourself to learn because the Bible says to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You don't receive with pride. You don't receive with a sense of a, a, an arrival mentality. Are we together? You are here tonight. Many of you have labored. Some of you are standing. I saw so many people outside. And to others it may not make sense. What is so special about this meeting that you are outside in the cold, you are outside in the rain, anybody who laughs at you, remind them that you are using your chronos to prepare for Kairos. Why do you serve in church like a fool? They are not paying you. They are using you. You tell them, no, no, no. It's a track record. It always starts with serving tables, but I will end up a mighty man. Is someone learning? How come you are serving God? Nobody has told you thank you. Some of you have heard my story. Many years ago, I used to carry my own keyboard, pastor, and trek from my house to go and play keyboard for one man who, you know, he, he was using a hotel. He just started ministry. From church, I would return and go back, carry my own small keyboard and take there and I would play that keyboard. Nobody ever told me thank you. The only thing I got one day was one cassette and one Fanta. When he was launching his cassette, then it, there was nothing like CD, his cassette. One cassette was given to me as a gift and then they were sharing drinks and they gave me minerals. Who would have known that that little boy playing keyboard would be sent to the nations? Who would have known that that usher here at this church, who is always sweeping this church? Can I tell you, every door God opens for you is not the real door he wants to open. That is so a test to see what you do. Uh, if God makes you an usher, it is truly not an usher that you will remain. There is a transition in the spirit. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in men. I do not know anyone God is using across the nation today who cannot tell you a track record of painful seasons where their work and their labor did not make sense. Do not think, the Bible says, though the vision tarries, the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. When these seasons, do you know, the connection from Kronos to Kairos, I'm wrapping up now. Man of God, wait. I know you are feeling cheated. That anointing you have is boiling. You have Greek and Hebrew you want to preach. Don't worry. When the seasons open, you will preach and be tired and not know what part of the Bible to read again. You just be patient. Keep preparing the sermons. There are enough sinners to exhaust your sermon. Be patient. Pouring seasons unnecessary will only waste your time. He says, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he laid down. The angel tapped him. I know where you are going. Keep eating. Prophet, eat. Man of God, eat. A day will come you will need to have stamina. I just returned from a trip as I'm standing jumping like this. Because you see, through experience and by the election of grace, he has trained us to know how to draw the strength of the spirit. Even when your physical strength is, you cannot fake some things. You will just die. Let me tell you, there are people, this wanting announcement, in two weeks of travel, you will return back and a doctor will have to say, just leave ministry. Because you have not trained your spirit man. 
It says, though our outer, our outer man perish, but that the inner man is renewed. Have you learned how to tap supernatural strength? Lord, I must do the ministry. Now God opens it and you have ministrations back to back. And then you break down. You become a reproach to God because of lack of preparedness. Someone, this is a prophetic word for you. The call of God upon your life is not a lie. But allow seasons to bring you. Wait. And while waiting, serve. And while serving, pray. And while praying, fast. And while fasting, study. Mm, yes, sir. The kind of mantle that is coming upon you is a very delicate mantle. Watch those who carry the mantle. Study their mistakes and learn. Don't just smile and be debating. If you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming after you. So just be, be, while you are shouting, give me Elijah's You better know what to do with Jezebel. Because Jezebel does not follow men. She follows Elijah's. So when that mantle comes upon you, I know I am a Samson to my generation. Tell me what you are going to do with Delilah. There are spirits that don't follow men. They follow mantles. I am a kingdom financier. Is that true? Have you studied about the king of Tyre? The one who sits upon that mountain. He took Jesus and said, bow to me and I will give you the whole world and the glory. What shall it profit a man, he says. So when God is training you to be that financial apostle, just when you buy the car and you make the first 10 million, God will say, give the car and the 10 million you will bind and cast his voice thinking he was a demon and he says it's not about the car i'm revealing to you that the loss that still resides within you cannot make you my treasurer my last treasurer disappointed me i'm looking for who i can train and still trust with the resources of the kingdom there are many believers claiming things in church and not knowing that every day that passes is a gift to prepare for your destiny david stay and kill the lions no applause but stay stay and kill the bear david stay until you become king joseph stay until you become prime minister esther forget that you are a village girl your destiny is in the palace so prepare yourself mary you are going to be carrying jesus so be careful something happens to your life you will not be able to carry Jesus who is God speaking to show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. We're about to pray. I came tonight for the sake of a great man of God. Who has a prophetic destiny even here in worry the lord put this meeting because of the next sets of prophetic worshipers that may be here scattered in the crowd you remind me of myself years ago i was in a reinhard bunker crusade i was already a man of god but i went and like the crowd that i saw outside i was somewhere locked in the crowd as i watched that great man you are seated but i was standing i stood for six hours reinhard bonke preached because there were certain graces i was truly looking for and you see every time you do not have the oil you go to them that sell and buy there are always them that sell you buy with hunger you buy with humility you buy with meekness these are the currencies that purchase spiritual things i stood on that ground and he preached a very simple sermon you may have heard me say respectfully speaking annoyingly simple a story that you know very basic and elementary and when he was done he was going to take a cup of water to minister the baptism 
And I did not know that standing on that crusade ground was my Kairos moment. The first day came and passed wonderful miracles. By the second day, I prayed and fasted. I said, Lord, I honor you and I honor this man. You have raised an ordinary man and given Africa to his hands. There must have been a grace. It's not by his oratory. It's not just by some charisma. Very simple man, but mightily grace. What did you put upon his life? I was wheeling people from wheelchairs. You know, they were there was a section they were pushing those who were sick and i pleaded i said can i join they said no i was not you know i'm not in the committee i said committee or not i must walk i came here i traveled and i came to receive something desperation i knew that it was a season as i was pushing those people i remember what i was saying i said lord this is how it will be in my meetings too in the name of the lord jesus christ yes and I watched tremendous miracles. But that was not the high point. Ladies and gentlemen, like those who are inside and outside, I was watching. And all of a sudden, I was taken over by a vision. A large, giant bird. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I was seeing visibly. Was not flying. Was soaring over that crusade ground. White in its brilliance. Tied something around the wings. Silvery was just moving and the spirit of god took me to genesis 1 and verse 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters for me it's not just a scripture i read it came as a revelation and it told me the union of the move of the spirit and the spoken word is what births the miraculous do you know when i came back to myself i had backed the stage i didn't even know when i had turned that was a kairos moment imagine if i said after all he's a preacher i'm a preacher the pride of many he's a singer i'm a singer he's my younger brother he's my elder brother listen be delivered tonight if you have that mindset i cast that spirit out of you in the name of jesus christ jesus came to a place where they knew him this is the reason why when god wants to raise mighty men he takes them away from those who know them because those who know you will never allow men celebrate the unique gift of god within you so God will take you out of their presence until you now return in power and glory then he will reintroduce you to them <laughs> hallelujah tonight let me tell you sincerely worry and champions cathedral you are truly truly a blessed and a fortunate people to have the caliber of people and voices that God has allowed to be ministering to you. You see, when you see people look beyond the gift, look at the, every altar that stands here, there is blood dripping on that altar. A testament of sacrifice. You don't get carried away by some of these you know, glitz and glamour and think that people are just entertainers. No, there are people you do not know the pain and the sacrifices. There are people because of their work with God, God left them with a token of promise that every time they stand to sing or to minister, there must be a deposit of something from heaven. My question is, can tonight be your Kairos moment? Can it be the moment that you say, I've been attending seven days of glory for many years, but now I came with a determination that as I hear the sound of worship, as I hear the word, my heart is open to receive. If that is you, then I congratulate you in advance because years from now, weeks from now, months from now, you will be celebrating this day and someday you will stand before people and while you are explaining to them the mystery behind the hand of god upon your life you will recall these moments and tell them i learned about the opportune time and for those who have aborted certain prophetic seasons god is a god of mercy can i tell you today and tomorrow are gifts from god to remedy yesterday you see, that is the reason why time is tripartite. You can't do anything about yesterday, but you can do something with today that will correct and reflect your correction in tomorrow. Every time you wake up in the morning, see you're waking up as an expression of God's mercy that there is hope for you. 
forget about yesterday remember ye not the former things the bible says nor consider it says for behold see the word behold means see conceive as a reality in your spirit i do a new thing we have to pray whilst we stand to pray is it all right if immediately i make the altar call now i think we should strike while the iron is hot am i right on that in fact be seated let me make the altar call first please let me two or three minutes there are people here listen to me there's no point cajoling there's no point playing games we're not playing some church jamboree the business of jesus has to do with your life and your heart remember jesus says if thou he says for god so loved the world he was speaking to nicodemus that he gave his only begotten son he says that whosoever believeth on him should not perish it's a law but that he should have life everlasting Verse 18 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might through Him be saved. I'm speaking to someone within this auditorium. I'm speaking to someone across all the overflows. And you are saying, Apostle, listening to you, I know by the Spirit that God is calling me to begin a very deep and a profitable relationship beyond church, beyond religion beyond having a form of godliness he calls you into a deeper experience now i don't know how many of you will be allowed to come and stand here but here's what i'm going to request the first groups of people who will stand here after i make the call once the front is exhausted then i would request that you just move to your led and just stand there and i'll request maybe a counselor or two to just attend to them but i want to make the altar call and listen you have a right to not pay attention to what I'm saying. God gave us that power. You have a right to say, Apostle, I've, listening, I've listened to you, uh, but I'm not interested in this, your decision. That's fine. But I'm concerned about someone who is seated, knowing that there are destinies connected to you. I'm concerned about somebody who is seated and he's saying, Apostle, give me an opportunity. Now, don't kneel. Stand for space. I will count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here if you mean business with jesus one let's celebrate them as they come make sure you understand what you are doing come to jesus you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one come come some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears everyone is given the gift of time listen to me ladies and gentlemen destiny is a function of time everything you give your time to you are giving a part of your life to jesus calls he beckons on you tonight no matter where you are and that includes those who are following by way of television jesus is calling Pastor Nat will say, someone is knocking at your door. How true. Jesus said, behold, I stand and I knock at the door of your heart. That if any man will hear my voice and open that door, I will come in and I will sup with him. And he will sup with you. He can give you a new beginning today. Today can be the beginning of a new day. Come to Jesus. I'll still give you a minute or two very quickly. My friend, you are standing for an altar call and you are recording me. Be serious. Drop that phone and concentrate on what we are saying. You see, this is what some of these people do. You are standing on, and don't feel embarrassed. You settle down and receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Huh? Come. Come to Jesus. Shabalakosiata. 
Whoever told you he does not change men. Read your Bible and watch Saul turn to Paul. Jesus. The Bible says that no other name under heaven is given unto men by which we must be saved. That name. That name. Come, I'm about to pray for you now. For those who are not able to make it in, please, may I request that you stand in front of your LEDs and please let me plead with counselors or any of the pastors if there would be at least one pastor. Okay, there are pastors everywhere already. God bless you. Now, for those of you who are in front, I salute you. Thank you for your courage. Some of you are crying. You are doing that which you are doing. It's unto Jesus. Jesus makes men. Jesus builds men. Lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Thank you. Thank you for not being ashamed. Thank you for not being ashamed. He gives you a new beginning. I plead the blood. 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 The precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. Ah. I don't have to cry. That is the integrity of the gospel. For he has paid the price. Plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. Hallelujah. For Jesus paid the price. All of you lifting your hands, please shout this loud and clear unto Jesus. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. One more time, say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, Tonight I, declare I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god amen Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones inside here, the many outside and those who are following online, even those who will be following by way of rebroadcast. Thank you for leading these many to yourself. The Bible says, as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you recipients of the life of God. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ from tonight until forever you go from glory to glory in Jesus mighty name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Now, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, there's someone waving the counselor placard. May I please request that you just follow this one instruction as we clap for you just follow them they will have a word with you just for a minute or two and then you will rush back can we give them a big god bless you please go ahead give them a big god bless you is somebody giving them a big god bless you Oh 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 You are amazing You are amazing You are amazing I'm saying that because I'm about to speak over your life finally 
Celebrate my friend and brother Pastor Nat. Thank you. Please stand on your feet. I'm about to speak over your life. You are amazing. Your love is amazing. Your joy is amazing. Your glory is amazing. Your power is amazing. You make the Hallelujah. Now, I truly, I'm not sure it's his time yet, but I mean, this is, this is the beauty of brotherhood and love. Thank you, sir. Let me even give you a big. Now, since he has come, he's going to blow the trumpet for me. Will that be fine? There's just something about prophesying under that unction. So he will blow that trumpet and I will speak over your life. Do you know what that means? The blowing of this trumpet and the prophecy means everything buried. For as long as it has been buried. Listen. Oh yeah, BJ Sachs. Come, 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 come. Let me give you a big hug, by the way. Hallelujah. So, there, there are sounds that are going to rise. Can we do this prophetically for two or three minutes? Now, be very sensitive. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. As the sound goes up, Yours is to open up your heart that everything that is dead, everything that is buried, and every season that I've wasted by the mercy of God, resurrection is about to happen. Does someone believe that? Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Hallelujah. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Champions Cathedral, worry, we stand united here on this stage and we decree and declare. We call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who can help men arise. I prophesy over your life standing upon the graces here. Every season that you have aborted, may my God restore. May my God restore. May my God restore. May my God restore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I decree and declare everything the devil stole that is taken from your life in the name of Jesus even by the sound of the trumpet we declare a sevenfold restoration a sevenfold restoration a sevenfold restoration a sevenfold restoration in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah every mantle every grace every unction that must rest upon your life in this season in the name of Jesus let it come upon you now as a man of God as a businessman as a parent receive it in the name of Jesus Christ finally the Bible says why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing anyone who has dug a pit for you we stand by the God of heaven like Haman they will fall into the pits that they dug in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah arise shine arise shine champions cathedral arise shine worry arise shine 
in the name of Jesus for the set time for your rising has come no more going down in the name of Jesus Christ now as Pastor Nat blows the trumpet dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.